Nano is set up our application to run perfectly on iPhone and iPad universally. We're now ready to finish up some of the final finishing touches within our application. And in this lecture, we're going to focus on the in-app purchases. And you may be wondering, why are we going back to the in-app purchases when we've already set them up? Well, there is a certain feature within in-app purchases that we also need to implement and we're waiting until we've done it universally so we can see how we can adapt and change applications once we've already kind of configured them. Now, this feature that we need to add in is the ability to restore any in-app purchases our user has made. Now, reasons to why you may need to restore the in-app purchase. Maybe your user has purchased, again, the in-app purchased, played the application and at some point deleted the application and then maybe came back and reinstalled it. Once they reinstalled it, they're basically installing a brand new fresh copy, which one, doesn't contain any of their high scores and it won't have saved any of their in-app purchases. Now this only happens if the user deletes the application then reinstalls it. So at this point, we need to kind of set up the ability for them to, if they've paid for the in-app purchase to remove the ads, to be able to restore it, remove the ads, and continue from basically where they left off. Now, this is something that we have to implement as our application will get rejected if we don't submit our app within app purchases with the ability to restore them. So what are we gonna do then? Well, we're gonna add a brand new button into our store view. So this means we now need to configure an interface, add additional objects in, into a view that already has its own constraints in. This is to why I've left it to this point for us to add in this feature. So we're going to zoom in then to our store view, and now we're going to adjust this. So what I want to do is basically copy and paste our purchase button and basically call it our restore button. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to get our text view just up above, and I'm going to drag this up just so we've got a fair bit of room, and i move the button up too. I'm going to press Command-C, Command-V to copy and paste it, and I'll place that down below place our button just above it and our text view is going to be dragged all the way down. Now just by doing that and kind of configuring a interface which already has constraints, it's going to start to throw up a few warnings as you can now see. So we need to adjust all of these and the main kind of um, culprits are going to be is the fact that this button was once linked to the button just above, this button was also linked down above. So this purchase button which I'll now rename to restore is the offending object in the view. So let's adjust them and let's go through the constraints uh, to see how we can adjust it and how we can fit some fit or fix it uh, for an object to be placed in a view with already implemented constraints. So let's start from the bottom then. So our bottom object is complaining that it was once linked to the purchase button up above. So if I go to the size inspector, and then we're gonna go all the way down now to our constraint, which simply tells us it's leading uh, where is it now? To the top space to the button just up above. We're going to select this and then press the backspace to then delete that constraint so it's no longer there. And in return, we're then going to pin it just up above. So we've deleted the constraint. Now we're adding a brand new one in, which is linking just up above to the button here. Perfect. Now this button here needs to add constraints to the left and the right. So we're going to add those quickly in now so it pins it to the sides of the view add those constraints in. Now our purchase button, again, because we deleted the constraint linking those two, it has nothing now below. So what I can do now then is add in the constraint down below, add that in, perfect. So we have now all the warnings now disappeared. So I'm going through all of the objects, there's no warnings being thrown up, it's now perfectly um, kind of working in sync. Well, kind of. Remember, this return button here has the equal height to our label. This purchase button here also has a fixed height at 50. So when we get to resize this view, this button hasn't really been told to do anything. Now the great thing is because we copied and pasted um, this button from our purchase one, it kind of follows some of the previous constraints that were already added within it, which as you can see, the height is already fixated at 50. So if you've gone to add a object in manually, just remember, check the constraints, check them, double check them, then triple check them, and then see how they adjust on the screen. So if I go to do something like making the screen size now a little bit smaller, you can now see that the button itself manually adjusts for us. Brilliant, so we now know it's working. 
So the last thing I need to do then, because I copied and pasted this button, uh, simply that now we have that action also linked up to it. So again, selecting our restore button, I need to remove the purchase link that was created to it. Then I'm going to bring up the file zone here and bring up the assistant editor, because what we need to do now is we need to add in one an outlet to give our rounded edges on this button and an action which will allow us to remove or basically restore the in-app purchase. So let's drag and drop this up and because we don't need to use this button anywhere else I'm going to simply call it button 2 as an outlet there. I'm going to scroll down all the way now to where we added in our function of our purchase button just here and I'll drag and drop in our restore button just underneath it and I'll simply call it restore and connect that up as an action. Now before I go on to code it to tell it what it needs to do, what I'm going to quickly do now then is get rid of our assistant editor and go back to our standard editor. And once we're in here, I'm now going to jump into our iPad storyboard storyboard now, as we now need to add this button also into this view. And again, if you've gone for the method of having two separate storyboards, you are going to have to also configure it on a separate view. So pretty much, if I zoom in a little bit closer now, we're going to be performing the same method. So I'm going to drag our text view all the way up here, move our button up to, I'm going to simply copy and paste a second one in, place that down below, move the button also down, there we go, and then return our text view all the way back down to the bottom, perfect, there we go. So let's start with our return button then, within the size inspector. We're going to get to our top space constraint here. We're going to backspace and delete it. That will also remove the constraint from our purchase button here to our return one. Now this button here, what we can simply quickly do now is rename it to restore. And then we're going to add in the constraints. Now I can either go for individual ones or can I simply pin it all the way around. That add in the four constraints now linking up to the button of our return button and our purchase. And that now removes again all the warnings, all the problems with the constraints. So again, we got that fixed date on, on 75, that's what that purchase button originally had. We're just going to quickly go over to the connections inspector and remove the purchase action linked up to that button. Then we can go to our files owner here, click the files owner, remaining in the connection inspector, and because we already created the outlet and the action button, all we need to do now then is link them up. So either click on the little circle here on our button 2 and drag that to our restore button. And the same goes for our restore um, action here. And we can select the action of touch up inside. There we go. Pretty much all set up there for our interfaces. So what we're going to do now then is head over to basically our store view controller dot swift. And the first thing we're going to do is set up our rounded edges on our button, our brand new button that we've just now added in. So we're going to type in button two dot layer dot corner radius to equal our 5.0 value to what we've been originally using. So now that the button's got the rounded edges on, we're now going to scroll down to where we have our restore button. Now how the restore button works is we just simply, very similar to what the purchase button does, rather than adding that product to the payment queue, we're going to simply then add or kind of call upon the payment queue to then restore a completed transaction. And that, what that basically does is goes through our user's account linked up to, uh, again, their Apple ID, they need to log in. Once they log in, it then finds out all the purchases they made within this application and then restore them. And how it restores them, it basically goes through the function, again, of our product's request. And then once it goes all down to our payment queue and updates the transactions, once it updates it, again, the restore is kind of triggered or kind of treated to how the purchase state is, and then, again, triggers this whole function. So let's go back to the top then, so in our um, restore section here, all we need to do is add in our SK uh, payment queue. Then we do dot default, pretty much what we've done standard before. And then we do dot, rather than add, like we do in our purchase button, we're going to restore completed transactions. And then once we called upon that, all uh, we need to simply then do is close up this little space there. And that's pretty much it. So once we call that one line of code, it's going to restore all the completed transactions and then go through and run through all the additional functions that we have up. Find out again what functions or kind of what in-app purchases we've got um, purchased, restore them, and then it'll go through the method of simply 
setting up our case here. Now something you can do is if I can completely copy this whole section here and paste it in once more. So we now have two of the same functions, but changing this transaction state here from dot purchase to dot restored. So basically what that means is it allows us to also create an additional action for if our user is restoring any you know existing in-app purchases. So even though I'm giving it the same kind of function or the same kind of um, you know action that gets triggered if our user purchases it, this allows us to go on to create again an additional action. So you can probably think of it if our user buys it, it does this action and so on and so on. Or we could do something nice. We could if our user restores an in-app purchase, then we know they've come back to the application for the second time so we could probably give them like a nice little alert or like a, a greeting message saying welcome back in the application stuff like that we can kind of do fixed in again with the ability to kind of detect if our users buying the in-app purchase or restoring it because they previously purchased it in the past so there we go we've got the ability to now set up uh, the restore function of our in-app purchases